This is Tomo News for Monday, January 16th. You get what you pay for. Eloy Alviso thought fixing his flat nose would land him more gigs. Instead, the aspiring Filipino model's dreams came crashing down after a back alley cosmetic procedure ruined his face for good. He went to a transgender beautician and got a nose and chin job via collagen injection for 500 pesos, or roughly $10. The injection worked, and Alviso got more jobs. But two years later, things started to go downhill after a friend noticed that his nose seemed a little deformed. Soon, both his nose and chin had become swollen and infected. When the 24-year-old tried to ask the beautician for help, he was cursed out and threatened. Doctors eventually found a lethal cocktail of petroleum jelly, wax, and sealant crammed inside his nose instead of collagen and performed surgery. With his now permanently scarred and mangled features, Alviso is forced to do odd jobs, often moonlighting as a Halloween ghoul. Police are still looking for the transgendered beautician, but already have a warrant for her arrest. Father uses Find My iPhone app to locate and kill phone thief. Derek Grant, a UK father, and three of his sons have faced court over the stabbing death of iPhone thief Patrick Bradley. 20-year-old Jordan Grant was leaving his job at McDonald's when Bradley robbed him of his iPhone at knife point. At home, Jordan and his father Derek used Find My iPhone to pinpoint the phone and at the same time Bradley's location. Derek grabbed a kitchen knife, then he and his three boys found Bradley and demanded the iPhone back. That's when Bradley stabbed the elder Grant in the left eye. Derek Grant then struck back in self-defense, stabbing Bradley multiple times. Bradley died of cardiac arrest. Grant and his sons were all charged with murder. Derek Grant, who lost his truck driving job due to being blind in one eye, pled guilty to culpable homicide. His sons have all pled not guilty to murder. Florida family of three murdered in Wiccan ritual killing. An elderly woman and her two adult sons were found dead in their home last week in a triple homicide that police say may have been a ritualistic murder linked to last week's blue moon. Authorities believe that three days before the victims were found, someone the family knew entered the home. It is believed they were then killed as part of a ritual related to witchcraft. The three victims were found dead in their home Friday during a welfare check. All three reportedly had their throats slit and are believed to have been bludgeoned with a claw hammer. The family had been described as, quote, reclusive, and none of their neighbors, interviewed by investigators, had ever entered their home. 13-year-old girl sells herself to support younger brother. In Taiwan, a junior high school teacher reported that one of her friends had reported that she'd been prostituting herself to an elderly man for food money. The 13-year-old girl and her 12-year-old brother were living with their father. The father would often take jobs away from home and leave the two of them with no money for food. The 13-year-old girl took to visiting a nearby neighbor who would give her money for allowing him to molest and rape her. After the girl's rape was reported by the teacher, it was revealed that the pedophile had also molested and raped three other girls in the town. The 12-year-old brother confessed that he knew about his sister visiting the pedophile. He'd seen her go to his house once. His sister had told him to go home. The younger brother went home and told his father about how his sister sometimes came out of the house with money. The brother said that his father wanted his daughter to give the money to him instead of keeping it as food money. When the man was notified that charges would be pressed against him, he disappeared. Neighbors just pointed to the pile of stuff and furnishings sitting in the alley. They said he told them a moving van would come pick up his stuff later and that he was moving away. The van never came and no one has seen hide or hair of the pedophile. The two children have been moved to live with their mother, as authorities have also not been able to locate the father. The father was away on another job when the teacher made the report to police. Georgia daycare covers up a toddler's third degree burns. A Georgia mother is wondering how her 18-month-old son became severely burned on his legs after a stay at this daycare just outside of Atlanta last week. Last Friday, Megan Seabolt dropped off her son, Damon, and left him in the care of Eddie Pittman. At some point, Pittman possibly left the child unsupervised. What happened next is still a mystery. What is known, however, is that Pittman, along with owner Minnie Dupree and her daughter Tara Miller, conspired to cover it up. Pittman rubbed some ointment on the burn. Eight hours later, she told Seabolt that her son had been bitten by some sort of bug instead. 
Taking no chances, Seabolt took her son to Northeast Georgia Medical Center where she found out that her son actually suffered second and third degree burns. He is recovering and expected to fully heal over the next few months. All three women have been arrested on child endangerment, child cruelty, and testimony influence charges. Dad accused of purposely leaving son in hot car to die. What was initially thought to be a tragic accident is now being investigated as murder, Georgia police announced Wednesday. On June 18th, after having breakfast at a fast food restaurant, Justin Harris Ross strapped his 22-month-old son into a rear-facing car seat and drove about a half mile to his office. Initial reports indicated Ross forgot to stop off at the daycare center and instead inadvertently left his son in the car while he went to work. Investigators said the baby boy was left in the car for nearly seven hours while temperatures inside the vehicle reached somewhere between 90 and 100 degrees. After work, Ross drove about a mile and a half before he realized his son was in the car. Ross pulled over and tried to administer CPR, but his son was pronounced dead at the scene. Initially, police seemed sympathetic, but once investigators began asking questions about the moments that led up to their arrival on the scene, some of Ross's responses raised red flags. One issue was the distance Ross drove between having breakfast with his son and work. Just a four-minute drive. Could he have really forgotten about his son so quickly? Police also learned Ross went back to his car during his lunch break, yet he still didn't notice his son. One police source told local media the smell in the car was so intense, one would have immediately known something was terribly wrong. Ross, however, drove about a mile and a half before pulling over. Also inconsistent with his initial statement to police, Witnesses in the parking lot said Ross told them his son was choking. But perhaps the most damning piece of evidence was found on Ross's computer at work. Police said someone did an online search to find out how long it would take for an animal to die if left in a hot car. Ross has been charged with felony murder and child cruelty. He's being held without bond at the Cobb County Jail and pled not guilty at his first court appearance. Despite this new information, more than 11,000 people have signed a change.org petition requesting the charges against Ross are dropped. This precious father has already suffered more than any jail time could inflict. Please allow him to go home to his wife, one supporter wrote.